This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. On the drive to and from my parents' house in Washington State, we almost always stop at two particular McDonald's, one in Salem, Oregon, and another in Eureka, California. At the moment, we are in the parking lot of the Salem location, and I just finished a Big Mac and fries. Even though we are just passing through, I appreciate the familiarity and feeling of community. The other day, I was looking through my mother-in-law's photo album and came across a photo where she and her friends are standing in front of a McDonald's wearing their cheerleading uniforms. I usually call my mother-in-law New Mom, but her name is Marsha. Under the photo, Marsha had written a note and I clocked her into letting me read it here. San Bernardino, California. I have so many memories of this McDonald's over the years. My father took me there on what I think was opening day. What a thrill it was as a young girl to order a chocolate shake, hamburger, and french fries. Then there was the time when my cousin Hinda and I were given a tour and allowed to take dill pickles by the cupful out of a huge barrel. We must have eaten a hundred pickles each. Everyone in my family knows the story of how I accidentally missed the ketchup container and dipped a fry into my milkshake. Now when I dip fries in my shake, it's on purpose. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and my cousin Noel Novak, Larry's brother, picked me up from dance class and we went for dinner to celebrate Noel's graduation from high school. Years later, when I was in high school, we would go to McDonald's every Friday night after the football game. I wish you could see this photo. Marcia couldn't remember if they won the game that night, but everyone is smiling as if they did. Wherever your local McDonald's is, there's nothing better than that wonderful feeling of community. Well, maybe that feeling is tied with eating a Big Mac. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Donovan? Yes. Who's my next general with? Your next general, let's and see. And also, where's that fucking macchiato? You told I, me you didn't want that anymore. I want it now. Okay. I'll get that for you, but um, you want to meet your next meeting right yes, now? Yes, my next general. Okay, it's with Milo Ventimiglia. Milo, oh Milo, God, hey. I love him. Donovan, how are you? Um, you ready to see Karen? Yes, yes, yeah. Right. Um, Do you want anything to drink before... I am okay. You sure? I, I'm positive. Maybe a uh, water or a Red Bull or something. I have a Red Bull right here for Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank and you. Karen Sarducci, I'd like you to meet Milo Ventimiglia. Oh, Milo. What an honor. Oh, my gosh. Honor. It is so nice to finally meet you. Pleasure. It has. It, you, you have been on the mind of myself as well as other people talking about us getting together. So I'm happy I'm finally in your office. Thank you. I've been on the mind of other people, of, yes. like, of us getting together. Yes. Well, I'm very glad you're here. Thank but, you. Um, uh, also, I, I think what you said made no sense, but I love your agent and I love your work. Thank you. I mean, that it, that's the nice thing about being an actor. Lines are given to us and we can sell them, but original thought... Just improving is a bit off for me at times. So, if oh, you, and you, I, you have always employed the, the, the most amazingly talented writers. So, you. Uh, you know, thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, it truly is an honor. I was just in Borneo with my children, uh, Milo and Ventimiglia, and we um, he, they have their fingers on the pulse of Hollywood. And they said, oh, mom, you must meet Milo Ventimiglia. And I said, I would love to. Um, and then they introduced me to your work. Forgive me. Um, I sometimes, you know, I'm a very busy woman. You run a studio, yes. I... Um, but I am now familiar with a lot of your work, and you are 
brilliant. Thank you. You are handsome. You are intelligent. You're incredibly talented. You're intuitive. Um, you're youthful. And I want to throw a few movie ideas past you. I know that you are on an incredible show called This Is Me. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and... Um, and it's uh, it's just wonderful. It's moving. It's, Thank you. It's comedic. It's unexpected. Um, the acting is just incredible. Yes. Thank um, you. I like the way your arm looks in that T-shirt right now. <laughs> Thank you. I, it's, it's you know it's uh, muscular. You roll one sleeve up because if you go two, you're you're in the fifties. You're a greaser. You're Johnny Zuko. But when you just roll one. Uh huh. You know, it, it, well, I yeah. have to say I like your tricep, and if you could give me some tips later, I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to help. Got um, a great trainer. Oh, good. I've learned so much over the years from Jason Walsh. It's great. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, now, I wanted to, uh, I want to pitch you one commercial movie, and then one Oscar movie. Great. Now we don't have the scripts fully fleshed out. Okay. But we do have some ideas, and I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, of course. Um, I know that you can write and create as well as act. Some, yeah. I'm, I'm, I usually I like to employ writers, talented people, uh -huh. that, that is their trade. But you give me a script, and uh, I, I can sometimes just say, well, this part is great, or this part is sucks. And I'm, I'm an on-set fixer. So Okay, so now this first one is the more commercial idea. Okay. Uh, we want to return to the teen movie uh, Boon, or Boom, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of the early 2000s. Okay. Uh, so this movie, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. She's yeah. all that. Of course. Um, Do you know that I was, I, was, I, was, I was in that? I was in She's All That. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I played soccer. I was soccer player number two, or something like that. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, they cut everything out of the movie, which oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes, and you know what was the she's got fucked or no? Who can't else? hardly wait. Oh, can't hardly wait. Yes, yes. Um, what was the one like? Let's get boned or? Uh, um, no, that was drive me crazy. Oh, okay. That was a the, different era, though. That was a little later. May have been a little bit later, right? I hate it when you fight. Please don't fight. Oh, but what was the one where um, let's all get each other wasted and fuck? Isn't that what it was yes, called? Yes, I think that's what it was called. Let's, Love that movie. It's good, yeah, right? It's my childhood. Yes. It's yeah, good. Yeah. Totally childhood. Um, and Oh, and stick our penises in pastries. What was that one? American Pie. Ah. Yes. yes. Patriotic. Yes. Mm -hmm. it would, wouldn't it have been different if it was Italian pie or Russian pie? Uh, we should think about so this. like like a zeppeli or a uh, borscht. tiramisu borscht is, is borscht or it's borscht baklava is pie, but, no, but that's not soup. russian soup let's stick Stew. our penis i don't have a penis but let's if stick you it had in a soup? penis you would stick it in soup it's warm warm yeah. do you, with a little bit of sour cream do you like this sour. idea for a movie borscht dig oh, i don't know uh borscht cock i like it i think it's borscht a cock i think that's a okay. good title it's a great title strong Thank you. Strong. I like you. Thank you. Milo, I really, really like you. Thank you. I liked Likewise. you before, and now I like you even more. Thank you. Okay, so now this uh, movie that we have is called Have a Great Summer, Don't Ever Change. Now, we want you to play a high school student. Uh-huh. Um, and I, this is, I know it's a general, right? Of course. But if you wouldn't mind um, reading... Just a couple of lines, just sure. so we can hear. I, I have ideas for the poster already. So this is uh, once again, have a great summer. Don't ever change. Great. Uh, Donovan will be playing uh, the um, the first line, party girl. Okay, great. And you'll be playing party guy number one. Party guy number. You know what? This is yes. very reminiscent of my very first acting job. I was party guest number one. Okay. Very okay. first paying job ever in, in Hollywood. Here we go. <clears throat> what were you guys doing? No one is allowed in the bedroom. Relax, Ash. We're just taking a little tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, 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 was, that was that was perfect. Thank you, thank you, Karen. I, um, uh, I, uh, would, give me your thoughts. Tell me, okay, can, tell can, me everything. Can we do, can yes. we do it one more time? Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I need a hint 
of, I don't want to say rape, but I want a hint of danger, like danger and more a, a little more laughter yeah. at the end, if you don't mind. Got it. Okay, Donovan, okay. can we do it again? <clears throat> yes. How was my line reading? Great. Thank you. I didn't think so. But Horrible. Thank you, Milo. <clears throat> Always. What were you guys doing? No one is allowed in the bedroom. You know, relax, Ash. We're just taking a little tour. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, 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 Milo. Yeah? Oh. Oh, boy. Milo, that was wonderful. Thank you. Thank that you, was Cameron. Wonderful. Thank you. I did feel the danger. There, yes, I felt the rape. Something yes. might have brushed me under the table. Yes. But. I you know, I wanted to take the tour with you. And I wanted Ash to relax. And you wanted the souvenir at the end of the tour. <gasps> this episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Osea. Wondering what to gift your friends and family this holiday season? Female founded over 25 years ago by a mother and daughter team, Osea's award-winning cleansers, serums, face moisturizers, and body products give you the results you want. Skin that looks and feels amazing. I recently got to try Osea's new body butter, which, like their now famous Andaria Algae Body Oil, transforms dry skin without being greasy, has the same incredible scent, and leaves your skin soft, smooth, and healthy looking. If my experience is any indication, you can count on your partner giving you a lot of compliments. This holiday season, stock up and share your new favorite clean skincare and body care with your friends and family. Unqualified listeners get 10% off your first order with promo code ANA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. Gifting is always easier if you start early, so head to oseamalibu.com. Use code ANA. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Warby Parker. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and the lofty goal of creating boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Sunglasses, with or without a prescription, start at $95 and, just like eyeglasses, are available through their home try-on program. You just choose five pairs and see which ones you like. I was surprised by how quickly they arrived, which presented me with the immediate problem of deciding which ones to keep. I loved all of them, so you can guess what happened. And not only can you feel good about how cool you look, you can also feel good knowing that for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through partnerships with nonprofits like Vision Spring. Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So put your FSA or HSA dollars to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash unqualified. That's W-A-R-B-Y-P-A-R-K-E-R dot com slash unqualified. Hey, by the way, Karen, yes. I keep getting text messages from Milo. He wants he wants oh, you to call God. him back. Is my phone? Oh my my phone's not off. Damn it! Oh other Milo. Other uh, my son. Got it. Yeah. My son. Do you mind? Do you mind if we call him no, real quick? No, let's call. Yeah. Him. No, no, no. Let's call him. God okay. damn it! Great. It's probably the fucking school. He's probably smoking weed again. God damn it! Do you mind if he's on speaker or Milo? No, that's fine. Doesn't bother me at all. Uh, if he's getting expelled again, uh, what do I do? Uh, hello, Milo. 
Are you smoking are weed you at school? Why are calling me? Mom. What? I'm your mom. Call. I'm in Aspen, too, right now, okay? Okay. Milo, why the fuck aren't you at school? What the fuck are you well, doing in Aspen? because all the kids are going to Aspen, too, which is actually in Dubai, but they recreated Aspen in Dubai, and it's amazing. And we're all just, like, playing virtual reality reality, which is with re- virtual reality without the goggles. We're just going around and hunting people. Milo, are you being yeah, good? Yeah, Mom. Are you being good? You're not. Yeah, I'm being fine. You're not. Okay. Are you school? Are you smoking weed? No, mom. I smoke weed. I smoke cocaine. How many times I tell you? Never listen to me. You never listen to me. Well, at least it helps with your homework, I suppose. But now listen to me. I have not seen you for six weeks. Yeah. You're 14. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm like a very mature 14. That's what my girlfriend said. Hey, Milo wanted to say... Haddad. Milo wanted to say hi to Milo. Hi, Milo. It's Milo. Oh, my God. You have the same name as me. Was he, was he named after me? Yeah, something like that. I, I think... Uh, no. No, you weren't. No, I wasn't. Um, no. What? Milo, you know this. I thought you said I was the only person who had this name, Mom. Listen, I know that your mother, and I'm, forgive me, Karen, I'm, I'm going to speak up. I know that your mother um, can read Sanskrit, and she is very creative. And, and it is a possible, possible explanation that, uh, that, that we share a name. Um, no, no. Son Milo, like you were really named after your grandfather, off. Milo Civiciani Sarducci. Oh, all right, cool. How do you spell it? I spell mine... It's just an M with a symbol on top of it, and then a, and then a graphic of you a You mean an umlaut? Like an Do you have an umlaut no, over your No, it's like my own symbol. It's like a print kind of symbol that I've designed myself. I've been into Kabbalah when I was 11, so it's a symbol from that. He's really creative. Yeah. Right. Incredibly. I mean, the, co- the I'm not going to be cocaine. designed by names. Honey, I love you so much. Oh, Mom, why do you do this to me, Okay. I told you I loved you at Christmas two years ago. How many times do you need it? You're so needy. Honey, I just, I just love you, and I just, you know. Okay, that- I get it. Remember, my Amazon wish list. Just get stuff off of that, please. And that's how I'll know that you, like, care about me. Baby, you know I will. I love you so much. Have a wonderful time in Dubai. Blah, 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 blah. I have to go. Milo, okay? Milo, we have to go. I, Milo? Yeah, what? Milo, your mom, is in me- your mom is in a meeting. We have to go. But honey, oh honey, God. now listen this to me. Is, honey, oh, no, f- Coke is fine. No meth. Coke, m- no meth. Donovan, shut the fuck up. Okay. Yeah, I'm not from 2015, mom. Ugh. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Milo Ventimiglia, do you want to say bye to Milo? Milo it was great talking to you. Really, I mean, to to for me to yeah, meet over the phone to, you, to have, meet my name say, honey. So, that's not. That's, we're that's, gonna, we're gonna see you for name. Honey, are you learning Sorry, Arabic? Sorry, but you're a great guy. But I'm gonna see you for name. Honey, are you learning Arabic? Oh God, no! I'm not learning Arabic. Okay, He's we're just gonna Aspen. go and have fun. All right. Well, we actually I, can swim with Dory from the movie Finding Dory. Okay. All right, honey. I, listen, I. Heard, All right. I'll see you later. Okay. All right. I love you so much. You're an angel. Okay. Oh God, you're so needy. Bye, Milo. Enough. Bye. Bye, Milo. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye. I love Bye. you. Kisses, kisses, kisses all over in weird places too. Where's, where's mm-hmm. Ventimiglia, by the way? Uh, <laughs> Is she okay? Or he okay? Ventimiglia. Uh, I believe. I think. Oh God. Didn't we talk about Patagonia or something? Wasn't she going to like... Oh, I bet it's cold. It's fabulous. Really? Oh, my gosh. You know what? You feel as though you were at the end of the earth, except you're not in Antarctica. Okay. But there's funny little penguins. Not the big ones, but funny little ones. Uh, there's also big mountains. There's a lot of snow. Wow. Uh, okay, so you're in on, uh, on Have a Great Summer, Don't Ever Change. <laughs> Yes, I think uh, I am in like prom night. 
Now, now, I just wanted to clarify, though. While you are, you do like to take advantage of people, uh, your character. But then in the end, you find it's not all that rewarding. Because he's taken just by his own want as opposed to earned his place with, with everyone. Donovan, Milo gets it. He gets it. I do. Oh. I, l- listen, being an adolescent teen, I get it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have about eight masturbation scenes because that's where you really find sure. yourself. Sure. Okay. Good. Thank you. Do you have lines for that here today? Mostly just a uh, uh, uh. Got it. Okay. Now, the other um, movie that we wanted to pitch to you yes. is your Oscar movie. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I've never had someone pitch an Oscar movie. That, that, I mean, that's just flattering. I'm so, like, I've never oh, had that. Oh, we believe Thank in you, you here at Imaginarium. You are. Thank you. You deserve everything. Happy, happy to be in great company, shoulder to shoulder. Yes. Yep. Now, this, uh, this movie is called Dick Pick, the Charles Dickens story. Um, this is a Dick Pick biopic. Okay. Um, about Charles Dickens. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he, what were his years of, <laughs> his years of operation? He, he was born when and died when? He was born in 1814 and died in 1873. Okay, so photography had, it was a, it was a new thing. Yes. It was a new thing. Well, yes. Like on tin plates and whatnot. Well, you're getting ahead of, of the story okay. a little bit, if you don't mind. Please, please. Uh, um, sure, sure. Um, yeah. So in between the brilliant novels that he wrote, mm-hmm. um, he had sort of a progressive perversion. As we'd like to say. Sure. Now he um, was a part of the um, the White's Gentlemen's Club, which is the most exclusive club in London. Okay. Um, uh, only a very, very, very select few men are allowed of a certain pedigree and whatnot. Okay. Um, now, as Charles Dickens, as as he confronts his writer's block, he progressively. Um, sort of develops a habit of exposing himself. Sure. To himself no. or to people? To, to at the club. At the White's White's Gentleman's to, Club. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. So at first um your comrades find it amusing. Mm-hmm. Comrades is sort of a communist term, isn't it? Donovan? We're going we're going back to Borsch. <laughs> yes, sorry. No. Dick and the Borsch. Uh but your friends. Sure. They find it amusing. As one would. Sure. They're yeah. drunk. Totally. You pull your pants down. It's funny. Great. Now, after a while, though, let's say after say the, like the seventy eighth time, mm-hmm. it starts to become less amusing. Let's say. Now, is it harder for him, or is it getting a rise of his out of his buddies? Do you mean? I'm I'm a little confused. Uh, you so at first it's, it's very amusing. His seventy eighth time, cool. 79th oh, time was it still, hard or I, I, he's still no, getting a rise he, i think he still thinks he's still hard it's, it's very funny Got it. yeah. okay okay yeah he's still, he's still hard. and so we cut to a lot of reaction shots of his friends being sure. like how are we going to help chuck um, right at this point and, right and um, while his dick is very handsome what do we do about it at this point this yeah. has been a lot of exposure sure at the same time you've developed syph- syphilis um, oh. Because you have a penchant for prostitutes. Oh, this is the little okay. known uh, dick pic biopic. Got of, it. Of Charles Dickens. Okay. Um, wow. So anyway, that's sort of where we're at. We think Oscar. How do you feel? Full frontal. Uh, I'm okay with it. I'm comfortable with my manhood. Um, the question wonderful. is, that's wonderful. Do, Jonathan, write that down. Comfortable with manhood. Yes. Do you? Because it's Oscar ilk, we'll mm, call it. it. It's it's cut from that cloth of, of you want to see me, Chuck Dickens, uh, really go for it. Right. You do you want me to live, embody this role? I I, I tend to, from action I, to cut, from action to cut, I am my character. Sure. So, I guess would you like me to fuck a prostitute? Yes. And then contract syphilis from action to cut. Or is this something where we're kind of Stella Adler 
ish thinking you know the sushi in the window isn't real but it makes you hungry to walk in and buy the sushi at the restaurant like in, in chinatown i hear what you're saying okay here's what we're thinking uh-huh. we're going to build a uh an 18th century set here in los angeles great so it's easy for you great uh, okay um of like a village well london sure Victor- victorian london. London. victorian london. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yes Loves, Park. Great top things. hats sure the gentleman's club will provide some extras okay uh, you live there for two and a half years okay um Continue to expose your penis. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, you're right. Let's have some prostitutes, maybe some that have syphilis. Okay. Uh, let's have some that don't, right, Donovan? So, right you so you don't know. So, so, so I, you don't. So, so I, as Chuck, would not know. Yeah. Got it. I mean, you, it's, it, it's not realistic that you just fuck one and contract oh no. No, no 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 no. i mean chat look you know chaz would follow them all so we're gonna need a roughly a four-year commitment um but i really think this will pay off i think so too in spades yeah, yeah. I'm i love so it glad. i love it I'm I, so glad. you know you know what i am floored by is what? that you not only see me as a commercial actor but you see me as an artist oh my gosh yes so satisfying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Milo. Thank you, Karen. This has been the best meeting you've ever had, Karen. Shut the fuck sorry, up, sorry, Donovan. Sorry. Go get some sorry. fucking coffee. Okay. I love him, but he is a fucking asshole. Can you do this? I was going to say idiot, but. I know. Well, yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's okay. He can't help it. I didn't hear he, what you he, said. He thinks he's going to climb the ladder. <laughs> I heard that. It's a short ladder. He doesn't know. I'm right. Here, guys. Yeah, let's get him a bunk bed. <laughs> Seriously, here, <laughs> step <everything>. stool. <laughs> uh, okay, well, thank you so much, Milo. It has just Good. been a pleasure, a pleasure and an honor. And I can't wait for me for you to meet uh, Ventimiglia. Um, but Ventimiglia is a wonderful, wonderful person. Yes, I've heard. Um, Milo yeah. is so wonderful too. He is such a genius. They both are. They're both geniuses. Yeah, and they love you so much. Thank you. Um, thank yes, you. Thank you so, so, so much. So happy. Donovan, uh, could you get a parking validation? Yes. I, your valid, did no, you? I, I just... I, I, you I, found street parking? Street parking, yeah. Awesome. Green. Oh. Yeah. No problem. No oh, problem. Green, what does that mean? I give back to the earth. Did you um, um, walk here or... <clears throat> Um, no, I, I, I don't need the extra piece of paper of getting the, the ticket, you know, cutting down the tree and whatnot. It's ah. just a sticker. Uh-huh. Oh. So that then there's pr- there's probably some kind of 3M kind of adhesive on it mm. that might contribute to. Okay, thank you, Milo. Thank you, Karen. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Milo Ventimiglia is here. Milo Ventimiglia is here. Milo wow. Ventimiglia is here. And so we had not only like <laughs> um, a ton of Twitter followers and instagram followers request and demand your presence uh-huh. mm-hmm. i think it was, it was power suggestion on your part anna i think that's exactly what it was was you yeah. know well, you, you put my name in the ether <laughs> and you 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 materialized that thank you so much for being here i'm stoked to be here are you kidding me best way for to, to spend you know an afternoon and we've known each other for a long time a very long time actually and the three of us you sim and i that was how we all met yep yep yeah yeah a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, yeah. sheer bliss. Yeah. Oh my God, crazy. Winter break. Well, yeah. Winter break. You played my girlfriend. I yeah, during did. the reshoots. You, did, had dark the reshoots. Hair. you had really dark hair. And you had a jean skirt on and a red shirt. That's a Ooh. very specific, very specific. Uh, oh. uh, wow, I creepy, remember that. Um, detail, but yes. No, I like that. Yeah. It's kind of flattering. Yeah. Do you remember no, I totally that? remember. And you were standing across the room, and, and I was supposed to just be like staring at you. I'm like, oh man, she broke up with me. And then I'm going to Aspen. I didn't get to go to Aspen. I know. Yeah. You would How have did fun. I break up with you? I have no idea. What a bitch. Why did it, Sim? Why did Sim? It? Because he was actually going to Buffalo and you didn't want to tra- uh, travel to Buffalo, but he ends up getting kidnapped by his friends and they take him to Aspen instead. Mm-hmm. And you know, where he staying, meets Steve Gutenberg. Where you meet, no, Steve Gutenberg got cut out of the movie. And a girl. Steve Gutenberg got cut out of the movie. I know. Oh. Maggie Lawson. Yes. That was yeah, Maggie Lawson. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. Is that why you're blonde here today? Because like, you broke up with me back then, and then I kind of like bailed. But now you and I went with the blonde girl then. Yeah. So here we are today, and you have blonde. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm That's flattered. how I get the guy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all true. Um, but no, it's so great to yeah. see you, and thank you so much for being here. It is amazing the time that's passed. It's, yeah. You've been here for a long, a long time. Well, time. I was I was even saying to Sim, I said I met Chris 
directing interstitial campaigns for Warner Brothers when I was 25 and he must have been about 23. Oh, my God. When he was on Everwood. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, which it's, was, which, and eerily enough, that was right after then we met because Sim, it was, I think we were like 22. 22 or 20, 23. 23, 23 when we did yeah. winter break. Wow. Yeah. God, crazy. good times. I just can't believe that my character didn't get to a Aspen yeah, man. I know, I know. You got to go. You got to go to uh, Willow Studios. Was it at Willow that we did those reshoots? Yeah, and there was porn being shooting God. next door. Yeah. Next door. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And then they I invited us that. to set. That was crazy. I didn't get invited. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't get invited to fucking Aspen, Aspen or the porn <laughs> set. Oh fuck. Sim, you've got a lot of like. I have a lot of come up. Yes, yeah. I know. I know. Seriously. Yeah. Help a girl um, out. I want to talk to you more about acting in a minute. Um, and, and I want to talk to you about your show. Okay. Uh, this is us, which is so brilliant. Thank and you. you're brilliant in it. Thank you. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, I'm sure. Well, he has two hit shows out right now. You have, this is us. And you also have the Gilmore, Gilmore girls, girls revival. revival. Yeah. 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 On Netflix. Yeah. It's crazy. Damn. <laughs> you're working long fucking hours. It's, you know, it's not that bad. I, I have, so I shot, I got This Is Us and uh, filmed the pilot. And then beyond the pilot, uh, I went back to Gilmore. I worked three days and three months. Um, and then the show got picked up and I went to the show and, you know, I've just been on the show. It's just, just you know, jumping from job to job and just kind of working. That's awesome, though. Yeah, it's fun. Congratulations. Thank you. And you so deserve it. And, Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Um. So now we're going to go, <laughs> sorry, we're going to move away from acting, but I really do want to act, ask you like, totally. some acting questions later. I feel like you were just about to like, hand it off to someone in like, the news <laughs> news booth and be like, and now, and now here's Sim with the news. <laughs> Thanks, Milo, for stopping by. <laughs> totally. Congratulations on everything. Thanks. That was a pretty good, what do you think about that voice for a newscaster? That was good. I like it. You had a lot of inflection. Try infle- it again. You had a lot of inflection. <laughs> okay. A lot okay. of inflection. The, um, everyone out. Oh no, no, no! Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't say everyone out there. Uh, hey, y'all! Uh, please check out the most brilliant show on television today. This is us with Milo Ventimiglia. Milo, thank you so much for coming in studio today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You're brilliant. You're charming. You're wonderful. It's been wonderful having you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Donovan. You can just hear it. You can hear a smile behind the voice. That's the best part about it. <laughs> I you hear I the get, smile. I think I could do better. I, I need to work on I love how Donovan happens to be there as well. <laughs> do, well I was about Donovan to go, is, I was, is, I was is moonlighting. moonlighting Donovan, yes. for, I was about to go to Donovan for the weather. Oh, okay. Oh. He's um, moonlighting as a meteorologist. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, wait. What about this question? This is kind of the worst. Okay. So, Milo, you are on... Uh, to, uh, um, okay, let's see. Um... My, please welcome Milo Ventimiglia. Thank you, Ventimiglia, right? Ventimiglia, Ventimiglia? Yes, Ventimiglia. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and A at the end, everyone gets my name wrong as well. <laughs> um, uh-huh. Anyways, so you are on a hit show called This Is Us. Please tell us what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is the toughest <laughs> fucking question. Well, actually, I'll say this. The worst part about that question for maybe six months was we weren't allowed to reveal that the, the the couples the folks are meeting in the show are a family so imagine when you have a show that doesn't have a premise it doesn't have a big mystery but there is something to learn you have to watch the show and we didn't want to ruin it for people and you're like it's about life and decisions and, uh, but then when you watch that pilot yes yeah. that pilot is unbelievable yeah. i think yeah. i texted you or yeah right after, away right away yeah. I, I was blown yeah. away by dan, yeah dan fogelman dan fogelman is is a fucking brilliant. genius he's incredible i loved his movie that he wrote um uh, cra- was it crazy stupid love crazy mm-hmm. stupid love right. yeah danny collins so he's yeah. he's i mean dude he 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 um he did cars right he's done, I mean, he's done so much and he's so funny in real life. Like, and he's the coolest, oh, coolest boss. Isn't that the he's best? the nicest guy. Fuck. Yeah. That's, that's awesome to have like a, a, yeah. a great, great boss. And also, and, and you notice like when the boss is cool, everybody's going to be cool yeah. because that bar is set. And all of yeah. a sudden, you know, you, you can't There's be no the asshole. For, right. No. no. Like so, I need my kale juice. No. Enema. No. Yeah. Or I'm like an hour late. No, no excuse. Cause Dan is already there. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, that's wonderful. Yeah, he's great. He's great. 
Um, okay, we're going to do this segment called How Do You Proceed? Or How Would You Proceed? Okay, got it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're ready. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Um, you have been dating a beautiful... Okay, imagine you're single. I don't know if you are. Got or, it. You know, we don't have to talk about that part. Got it. But we won't. <laughs> um, okay, you've been dating a beautiful personal trainer. Okay. Lisa, for three months. Okay. Um, she's a health nut. Okay. She loves cooking, and her favorite movie is Armageddon. Oh my God. I mean, all, all not no joke, not even joking. Already, that is in my top five of my top ten. I love it. Yeah. One night after having amazing sex, she says to you, you're finished, you know, you've had amazing sex. Okay. Can I get you a warm wash- washcloth? Okay. Um, she then gently removes the condom. Okay. Eats it. And exits to grab you the washcloth. Great. How would you proceed? <laughs> <laughs> I, is there anything wrong with any of that? My, my guess is this, Anna. My guess is this. <laughs> uh-huh. In the moments that we're not together, because we spend every waking moment together, she has made friends with a cartel. She is a drug mule. She is tasked with carrying my unborn children to someone Uh on the black market. I love this. So, not only is it up to me Uh to find out where it's going, who Uh it's going to, and for how much, Uh if we can repeat the process again, I need to know. What, do you want a, like a cut? Um, or are you? Um, um, I am looking for um, plausible deniability. Now, okay. I think I'm actually misusing the word. Okay. The term. Okay. Yeah. No. Because if I, if I'm totally misusing the term. Because if I know what it is, then I'm gonna. Sure. I need to not know. I need to not know. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the cut. Actually, I don't even want to cut. She's she's my my um, trainer. Um, hot sex um, will so give me you, a washcloth named Lisa. It's true. And it's true. So so there could be like, going with your theory. Yeah. Um, you don't mind the, the little Milo's. Well, on, like you sold. Either that. I mean, or, I don't want to judge. I'm not judging. actually. You know what? I I'm looking at this thing the whole wrong way. I think that maybe she's testing me to see if while she is constipated. I'm going to be there for her as she passes a fucking <laughs> condom. If I'm going to be there for her to in return, reciprocally, recipro- sure, sure. Uh, bring her a washcloth, a warm washcloth. So you are in. You're oh, in. I'm in. If I have a hot trainer, Armageddon. girlfriend, Armageddon loving girlfriend named Lisa, who swallows my condom and gets me. <laughs> A wet washcloth? <laughs> Anna, Sim, everyone, I am the fuck in. All right. Not a deal breaker. I not love a de- it. Not a deal breaker. I love it. <laughs> that was amazing. I have, I had. I, How many more has we got? Come on, let's keep All right, all right. <laughs> I all right. have one more. I wish we had more. I wish, Sim, come up with something yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. spot. You okay. produce. We, we've got another one. You are dating a beautiful Victoria's Secret model. Okay. For two months. All right. Um, you decide to take her to the to the premiere of your film, your new film, Illustrious Souls. Illustrious Souls. Yes. Okay. Um, you arrive in a limo or mm-hmm. whatever car, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you're going to the yeah, premiere. Cadillac sends you a car, you sure. just, you take it. Um, you are dressed in a Dolce tux. Okay. You're groomed. Mm-hmm. Um, you pick her up like, at her house. So mm-hmm. she, maybe she lives. Well, she does. No, she does well for herself. Victoria's yeah. Let's say she wears townhouse. Town, yeah. Let's, Look, she tra- she's Victoria's Secret model. She travels a lot. She doesn't want to worry about. Right. She doesn't want to worry about you know gardeners or totally. burglars. So she needs yep. turnkey. Yeah. Turnkey. Yeah. Yep, yep. Maybe yep. she lives uh, on Sunset, like kind of by Doheny or something like that. Oh yeah. Or, you got to be able to walk to whatever those Sunset yeah. Plaza. Sunset Plaza. Yeah. Sure. 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 Okay. Um, you pick her up and mm-hmm. well. Oh shit! Though this might 
This might, this be, might be a deal different. breaker. Well, no, no, it just complicates a little bit. Le- okay, let's just say you pick her up, okay? I pick her up. Great. I pick <laughs> no, her no, up. No, no. Let's say she's renting a house. Um, <laughs> she's renting a house, a small mid-century house in uh, Beechwood Canyon, okay? Great. All right, you pick her up. Uh-huh. Um, she is dressed in a gorgeous, like, smoking gown. Like, you know mm-hmm. that walking on the red carpet, like... They're going to look at it's, her, not at me. No, no. It's, it's just... They're going to be impressed it, with me. It's going to be your night. Got it. It's you, the okay. star of okay. Illustrious Souls. Illustrious Souls. souls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you're in the driveway, staring mm-hmm. at her. Okay. Um, the, dr- the driver is, like, holding the door open. Mm-hmm. Um, she says, I have a surprise for you. And she reaches behind her back, and she brings out a hose, and she sprays you down completely. While laughing hysterically. I'm showing up wet. <laughs> I'm showing up wet. With her? In the trunk? <laughs> now. She is loving. She's laughing. Yeah, ask questions. Okay. Um, was this her interpretation of saying to me, you are hot. <laughs> this- I need to hose you down. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. or is this her way of suggesting that maybe because of illustrious souls, uh-huh. illuminated illustrious souls, illustrious souls, which I'm sure may be a contender for a oh, of season. course it is. Yeah, no, it's no, one no. of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, premiere is in yeah. December here. <laughs> <laughs> totally, exactly. Uh-huh. Is it her way of trying to knock me down a peg because she feels like? I'm going to blow up to a point where I'm going to leave her for possibly another no. supermodel, younger, hotter, blonder. Nope. More smoking just than her. No. Okay. None of those things. It's just a surprise. She just thinks it's hysterical. She wants to. She's a practical. She views herself as a practical joker. So she there's a she, she probably watches YouTube, right? I'm guessing oh, she yes. watches YouTube. Not only watches, and, she posts. <laughs> oh, so she may even have someone hiding on the other side of the driveway while she pulls the hose out to hose me down with the Cadillac guy waiting there holding the door for us to go to my her premiere? Be- yeah, her best wow. friend. Lila. <laughs> Lila. Yeah. But she thinks it's so funny because she's a practical choker. Okay. You know what I think is funny? But killing her. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I agree with you. Yes, I'm yeah. with you on yeah. that too. Yeah. Fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck her. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah, that would be... Um, because, like, I, listen, people have different interpretations. You can never discount someone and their feelings. So she feels that I look hot and her way of saying, you look hot, babe, I need to hose you down. And she hoses me down. Literally, it's like, well, you walk down a stretch I, of wood for a living and that's great but you know I think you're, that she is so i did not mean to cut you off but no, I, no. I think that she thinks that it truly was going to be funny and you were going to laugh and i might <laughs> if if you had a gun no 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 no. i'm probably no, like you know you know those people that think that a certain practical joke yeah is really funny like the dude that walks around shooting his wife with the nerf gun have right. you seen that one on YouTube? No, but that sounds awful. Yeah, but like literally he'll surprise her and like he will attack her and like poor wife. I, it's, yeah. That, I, it's so fucked up. And, and part of me is like, no, she's got to be in on it. She's got to be in on I may, it. Yeah, guess at this point, but man, that would be the kind of thing that I, I think. Uh, yeah, deal breaker. Oh, yeah. 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 No. yeah that would be yeah. attic, attic time. Yeah. I would yeah. have to lure him up to the attic and. Like latch it right, attic trunk, attic trunk. Yeah, s- you know, s- submerge the Cadillac in yeah. the ocean. Do you hear a knocking? No, no. Don't worry about that's it. just the uh, muffler. We put in eighty, eighty-nine yeah. gas. You know, eighty-nine yeah. octane gas. Maybe eighty-one. Maybe when they still had leaded. Yeah, remember leaded fuel? Oh mm-hmm. my god, leaded fuel. It's like paint. Didn't it kind of smell good? I think gasoline smells great. I do too. And it's pink. Of all things, gasoline I mean, is pink. I didn't know it was pink. Yeah, it's oh. pink. Like if you, if you look, you know, look at gasoline. It's kind of pink. Like a sheen? Yeah, it's like champagne. It's like the color champagne. Oh. Maybe. If you know like how but champagne it has a is sheen. the color. Yeah. Yo, like like a film. I think that might be the oil that's kind of distributed oh, like I petroleum see. and whatnot I to make gasoline. What do you? You know 
you're mechanical. You know a lot of no, he's stuff. A, he's actually, I'm not kidding when I say this, but he's like, Seriously, one of the smartest people I've ever met in my entire life. I'm not just saying, I, I told <laughs> Thanks, you this, Jim. but I told you this a yeah. long time ago. Listen, if there's ever anything really, really wrong yeah. in Los Angeles, it's Los Angeles, yeah. um, like disaster, tsunami, zombie apocalypse, come to my house. Oh, I always said come to my house. Fine. Oh, I, I mean, this is my thing. I say, come to my house. I'll be there for three days. You will have, you will, you'll be safe. Wait. You will have provisions. And then after three days, I move on. So maybe, oh, maybe I okay. pick people up okay. at maybe my house. Three, come then my I come place? to your place. Because we have provisions too. Yeah. You feel fortified. And I feel like you got, you know, And we're going to climb up on this Spanish tile roof yeah. with our weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And just pick off supermodel Victoria's Secret hose <laughs> hose bearing people. Don't you hose me down. Don't you hose me down. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's a Karen Sarducci movie. <laughs> <laughs> don't you Don't you hose me down. Don't you hose me down. Don't you hose me down. Um I feel like that could be a musical. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a five minute break and then we can we'll, take a five minute break okay. and then, and then, we're, then we're gonna strangers. call strangers. Yeah. Oh my god. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by State Farm. And in honor of their surprisingly great auto insurance rates, I'm going to tell you about a particularly surprising day on set. It takes me a long time to read a script. For almost every line of dialogue, I will stop to figure out why my character would say it, how it fits in the conversation, and how it's going to come out of my mouth. Between the lines, there are larger chunks of text which describe everything else happening in the scene. Maybe what a room looks like, what characters are wearing, and what they're doing. As I often underestimate how long everything in my life takes, I know I can make up some time by reading those larger chunks a little faster. I got the script for Overboard about six months before we started production. I read it in my warm living room, wearing comfortably warm clothes, sipping from a warm mug of tea. Somehow, it never occurred to me that when you jump off a boat in the middle of the ocean, the water is surprisingly cold. And it doesn't get any warmer on take two. Here at Unqualified, we love State Farm because they provide coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Who gets excited about trying a new restaurant that has two out of five stars? When it comes to finding healthcare, don't ratings matter even more? ZocDoc is a free app where you can compare doctors, read reviews from real patients, and even make same-day appointments. When I finally called to reschedule my dentist appointment, I was told that my dentist had been retired for nearly three years. In my defense, parking was a nightmare. Through ZocDoc, I found a new dentist who had great reviews, took my insurance, and whose office was actually within walking distance. I was also able to book an appointment instantly without talking to a receptionist who made me feel guilty about not having my teeth cleaned for three years. My new dentist didn't make me feel guilty either and only suggested I floss a little more often. Whether you need a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash unqualified and download the ZocDoc app. Sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor who might be available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash unqualified. Oh, I just texted Paul. Put it on airplane mode after you text him. Okay, well, speaking of Paul... I don't know if I've told you to... Oh, are we recording? I don't know if I told you to to fuck off yet. You haven't yet. You haven't told me to fuck off, which I'm really happy about. Hey, Sim? Yes. I love you. Love you, too. But fuck off. But fuck off. (laughs) See, he beat you to it. I know. (laughs) Which is so so hard, because Sim is the sweetest man on the planet. Aw. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Not that sweet. We've we've shared a foxhole. We have. That's the thing, though, is that Sim... No, you are actually really... You're really kind. Yeah, thank, thank you. I think Dude, you, co- you come from good stock. We're kind. Thanks, yeah. man. Appreciate that. You and I are so both, are you. You are. Thanks, man. Yeah. You're all. You both are very kind. 
But you're, Sim and I are kind in like a very narcissistic way. Like, I don't think it would. <laughs> like, occur- it benefits either of you to just to be nice. Like, it wouldn't <laughs> occur to us to bring nice donuts. Yeah. To somebody's yeah. podcast. Yeah. But I mean, I, well, I was I was driving past Phonuts, and I thought, hey, maybe you guys would enjoy a vegan, gluten free, or then a regular vegan, or then a regular gluten free, or a regular like Phonut. And they were delicious. They are they super are tasty, good, right? Yes, and yeah. that is so kind of you. But you're right; we wouldn't have thought of that. No, because you just show up. We're narcissists. <laughs> like we, or you, or you'd get there and you'd think, "Where's I want a my donut. shit?" Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why didn't you provide donuts? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay, we, we do have one call, two calls, excuse me. But before we get to the first mm-hmm. call, let's thank. Uh, Paul Shear publicly. He yes. played the role of Milo, your son, Milo, on the... Which is awesome. The, the, the first little thing. Thank yeah. you, Paul. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. And now we're calling Jenny. Jenny is in Charleston and she's 32. Got I it. love Charleston. I've never been. Oh, it's beautiful. Is it a college town? Why would you ask me something I don't know? I feel like it's like in Georgia. And like there's Hello? Like... Hey, Jenny. Hi. Hi. Uh, Anna is here. Anna, you want to say hi? Hi, hi, Jenny. And Anna is going to introduce our guest. Milo Ventimiglia. No. Yeah. No. Hi, Jenny. How are you? It's Milo. I got to tell you, Jenny. um, Oh, my gosh. Milo has... I I am married to, uh, like... Stud. Yeah, a stud. He's a a stud. Like, he's the best man in the world. But I got to tell you, I'm looking right now at Milo's biceps, and it is hard to turn away. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank I'm you, so Anna. excited. Okay. All right, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much for submitting a question, and we, uh, we, I don't know what it is, and, my, and Milo don't, doesn't know what it is. But um, I know what it is. But Sim does. So Jenny, <laughs> your, your husband's dream is to get a PhD. Uh, tell us why you're feeling conflicted. Sure. So, um, okay, so we are in our kind of early, mid-30s age range, and um, my husband, as Sim said, his dream is to get his PhD um, in math. And we are kind of right now um, thinking or hoping to try to start a family um, soon, kind of after the after Christmas. And the whole PhD thing, you know, I'm kind of learning right now that that includes just so many um, sacrifices. It's uh, five years at minimum where he would be in school full time. Um, right now, he's got a great job. We, we both have great jobs. Um, we earn, you know, a good income where we we feel good. You know, we have um, plenty um, of money basically. But um, it would be five years where I would be the sole breadwinner. Um, and then we also kind of live in an area where there are no programs um, that he could enroll in. So. This would mean moving away. Um, I really have no idea where we would end up, you know. And one of my my things that I've kind of always dreamed of is being able to raise our family um, near both sets of grandparents. Um, and you know, this uh, if if we were to start um, a family, you know, within the next year or so, hopefully, um, that would mean you know our kids would be super young when he, uh, you know, when we're far away from the parents or from the grandparents. So we're kind of, you know, trying to figure out a way to make this work. Um, but it, 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 it's tough for those two reasons. I've got so many questions um, and so many just like thoughts and ideas. Sorry, Jen. Hey, it's Milo. Hi. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited to hear it. Go for it. it, Yeah. I don't, I don't mean to hijack everything you're talking about. I feel like we're all now looking at one another and like we all have so many different things we kind of want to say and, and, and step in. I have a question. Is there an end goal with a PhD in mathematics for your husband? Is he like, I want to work for X company and in order to do, do I want to be a professor or yeah. Like what is the end goal or is it, I want to challenge myself and learn equations that nobody's ever learned before. And I don't know the application, but I want to have that feather in my cap, so to say. So I think it's kind of a combination of both. Um, right now where we live, he is kind of at the top of his game for what he does. And what does um, he do? You know, he, he uh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, he, uh, 
is a data scientist, um, and that's about as much as I can explain about it. Okay. Um, he works in tech, um, kind of a Silicon Valley type job, but not okay. in Silicon Valley. And um, there's, you know, he loves his job right now, um, but there's not many jobs like that where we live. Um, and for him to kind of go to the next level, uh, a big part of it is is to go on and get this PhD. Um, he is also kind of just like a life learner. You know, he comes home from work and he like does math problems for fun. Um, that's just the type of person he is. So um, the end game, you know, we're not sure. That's something we're kind of trying to figure out right now. Um, you know, I, I think probably his pipe dream would be to be a professor. Um, but there's also, you know, we talk, kind of talked about some possibilities of him afterwards going into in the industry where you could potentially, um, you know, make a little bit more money um, and then being um, like an adjunct prof- professor or something on the side or at nights or something. Is there, we kind of is, that it. Is there a way that you both win, meaning knowing that it's going to be five years of a program, a mathematics program, maybe there's some sort of year or two of kind of online coursing in a way corresponding with a school that possibly isn't in the city that you live in. At the same time, you are working, you're getting a family, and you know what, if he's studying at home, maybe at a certain point he'll be kind of looking after said kid if you're starting a family giving you guys the opportunity to to live near does something like that exist where it's an online type situation could could that work i don't think there's really online um i don't think that would be his preference um i don't i don't know i'm really not educated enough on it to speak for him um but that i think that's kind of the um biggest part of our problem is like the communication behind this um Uh. since it's you know kind of I am super passionate about the family side of things and my wishes for our family. And he is just so super passionate about school. Um, So, you know, whenever we try to have this conversation, we even had one last night, you know, it it starts off super calm, collected and everything. And then we just kind of both break down um, and get really defensive over it. And it's, um, you know, because I think it's because we know that it's one of these situations where someone has to give something up. Jenny, if you are um, if you are really wanting a family, and and even if you both were really wanting a family, my experience as a parent is that it it it, it you know it falls it it sucks, but it it falls a lot on the woman. Mm-hmm. And if he mm-hmm. is not as passionate, and if you know about about you know the idea of having kids and raising kids, he's going to be coming home uh, and doing his work, and you are going to be you know there's going to be days when you're really frustrated when he's not changing the diaper or interacting with the kid and, um, and, uh, not as involved and you're working and you, it, it's, it will be, it's, it's a tough journey. Even if both people really want kids, it's, it's, it's a tough journey because it really does tidal wave your life. Um, and, and you, you have to, you have to sort of, acknowledge that part um i I, you know you're young i think um i think that if i think that timing is everything when you have these discussions and if you can Mm um i i I was gonna say maybe go ahead uh, well just just like you know it sounds like you have these discussions and then they tumble into um, complete differences and mm-hmm. then in despair and like, and you feel like, okay, how is this possibly going to work? And of course you want your family support cause you're going to need it. Um, and if yeah. you don't have your family support, uh, then you're going to definitely need, uh, you know, outside support, which is, you know, it can be expensive. Um, because you're you're working, you may not want to give up your job. And are you are you also are you close mm-hmm. to the grandparents? Like the, these are your parents, um, right? Or in his parents? Yeah. Well, right right now, um, both of our both of our parents live um, pretty close. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, we would you know if we were to move away, we would definitely give up some built in help. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I think. This is this is this is a big one, and I don't think that we can we can we can really solve it because it sounds like your husband is um, isn't isn't quite ready for 
for children, if I'm reading you right, Jenny. And that's, do you think that's, that's the a case? Tough, that's a tough thing for me to say. I'm sorry. I don't know. You know, um, I don't. I don't know if that it's that he's he's not ready. You know, and and maybe I misspoke when I said that. You know, I'm I'm passionate about the family, and he's passionate about something else. Because, you know, it, it, I didn't mean to say that he's not passionate about starting a family. Because he is. He just um, I think kind of has two tracks in his mind right now. You know, where it's like we want to figure out a way to make um, both work. You know. Yeah. I and, mean, it, uh, I, I was gonna say I was gonna say one thing. I think. You can get anything you want. You just have to know how to say it. You can get anything you Mm -hmm. want in life. You just have to know how to say it. So if you really consider how you're speaking to your husband and the way you're approaching the conversation and delivering to him your desire to have a family and start it in the now-ish world of after Christmas, which is like three weeks away. (laughs) Don't say that. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong thing to say. (laughs) Um... (laughs) <laughs> but I think it's, it's, you have to, God, I don't know. It's just, there, there is a way to speak to someone. Like, I don't know. It's, it's time. It's time. Yeah. Too. But I also think that, um, and, and I don't, I don't think, I, I don't know what quite the right phrasing for this would be, but if your husband is, um, a constant learner and a lifelong learner, mm-hmm. I, I don't know why, you couldn't have two kids and when they're four and six, when things get a lot easier, he couldn't work on his PhD at that point. You know, I mean, there's no rush on uh, for him if he is a lifelong learner to get his PhD. He likes his job. It would yeah. be different if he hated his job and he, you know, um, mm-hmm. but if he, but if yeah. he likes his job. That's what I was going to say too. He likes his job right now. Why? Yeah. And he's young. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, why not get his PhD at, at age 40 and, um, and, and continue to. And by that point, he'll have saved enough. You guys will have saved enough money and to the where. And kids will be yeah. so much easier to take care of too. It's that mm. you won't need, um, the kind of help that you need when the kids are two, you know, zero to two is really hard. Right. Um, and you will need, need help and, and, and it does cause stress in your relationship. Um, but going back to Milo's point, it's all about yeah. how you say it. Right. And yeah. What right. you say yeah, kinda, and when you say it. Yeah. Right. Kind of marrying the two yeah. two ideas that Anna was saying. And But do you think that there's something else like in this drive for getting his PhD? Is is there something else? Is there like an escapism thing that he's going for? Like, um, do you know what I'm saying? Is is there is there something un, uh, deeper under like like does he does he want to? Is, he is, it, to is this sort of like a I want to climb Mount Everest sort of a thing? Do you know what I'm saying? Like if that's the case, see the Gyllenhaal movie and just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you know what I mean? Like like is this is this um. Does he want this as a feather in his cap? Is it well? Is it is, well, more is, like or a, no? Is it more of like a subconscious escape? Of, mm. Like I got to do this because I'm unhappy in some other way. Mm. Or do you know what I'm saying? Like um, this is I I need to run the Boston Marathon, but for mm. whatever reason. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. No, I I yeah. I understand your point for sure. Um, I just don't I mean know. he is. Yeah, I mean he's like a total perfectionist and. Um, likes to kind of always be striving for something, um, you know, so he, he doesn't do well, just, he's not complacent, you know, he's, he's got to continue to, to be active and doing, you know, I guess like learning new things and things like that. So I think that's kind of where it comes from. Um, and certainly getting your PhD in math is kind of, I think, at least from my uneducated standpoint is, you know, the pinnacle of that. I mean, that. I'll tell you what, at um, children's birthday parties... That is going to crush. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, you guys know how many zeros and ones and you know can stack up to make a birthday cake? Yeah, it, and it sounds like you know when if and when he gets his PhD, there's going to maybe be something else. He may just have that personality type mm-hmm. that that you know there, there's there's going to be something else that he that you know he strives for and and that's a that's a great quality mm-hmm. um but it also he may not find you know your kids it, like incredibly interesting until they're like 6 and then 
because that mm-hmm. happens. That ha- that I felt like that happened with me. I, I love you know, my son to to pieces, but uh, but you know the first two years they're like these adorable. He was like this bald headed little blob, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now that he's speaking, like I, I find him so much more. I, I find a, a whole different kind of connection um, with him and with like sort of, uh, I don't know. So, it, and your husband may very well find the exact same thing, but the price that you pay for that is feeling like um, you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, yeah, I mean, delaying it is, is something that I don't think we really had thought about too much. Um, just with the place he is right now, he's got to fin- finish up a master's, which he's working on right now. So we, we'd be looking at not starting for another two years anyways. Um, but I hadn't really thought about delaying until, you know, the kids were five or six. Um, I guess probably just because we don't realize how much goes into child care for, um, you know, an infant or a toddler or anything. Um, so I hadn't really thought about that idea. I feel like uh, uh, raising a child is like a lifelong PhD degree. <laughs> like you are, mm-hmm. you're constantly going, there's going to be a lot put into making sure that you don't raise an asshole and that they're healthy mm-hmm. and cool that's, <laughs> and all of that. That's and the exact, I, I think that's the exact quote we put. We don't want to raise an asshole yeah, into they, our they've question. They've written books about it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. I, and and I mean, you're going to step on Legos in the middle of the night and it hurts. It hurts. I'm sure. <laughs> but, right, so let's give Jenny some final advice oh before God, she goes. Jenny, though, but the, I, I don't, I don't quite know what to. I, I, um, I think the best, I guess, the best unqualified advice, and I think uh, hopefully Milo can and Sim can chime in uh, with their with their pieces too. But, but I, I think that, um, I think that you really need to figure out how much your husband wants a child and at what time he wants a child yeah and mm-hmm. that that mm-hmm. will be um and 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 if you can figure out a way where that doesn't end in um where if you can figure out a way for extreme patience during these kinds of conversations where he doesn't feel mm-hmm. Uh, a tremendous amount of pressure to give you an answer. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Don't put him put, put his back up against the wall. Also, maybe from just like a guy's standpoint, him. You know, th- th- I don't know in a man's mind that there's ever a right time. I know, I know. I, know, I, know, I think no, for a no. woman too. Yeah, I mean, I I think, but a lot of women they're pressured of. Oh my oh, god, I'm yes. thirty. I you know, my right. eggs are dying or any of right. this. And like, I don't know these things. I'm a caveman. But for men, we're not driven in that way of. I have to be a father by the time I'm 32, 35, any of that, right? But, right, That's yeah. True. So I think as for, for guys, that is that that kind of ticking clock isn't on our minds. So we basically, mm-hmm. we basically just kind of go, okay, I'm my. This is what my wife wants. I want my wife to be happy, as well as I know that this is a massive undertaking. But you know what? I'm going to be able to influence a mind, a young mind and shape a human being. And that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. 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 There's, there's moments of extreme frustration when you're, you realize that your husband has not done a diaper count and there's one left and you think, why didn't he see that this was going to be, you know what though, Anna, you know, it's it's great. This guy's (laughs) going to, he's a mathematician. He's going to count those <laughs> diapers. Is, I was going to say, maybe you could plot them with like, hey, then, there's homework to do. But then there's moments <laughs> when the baby is in bed with you and you're both staring at it and you realize like an hour has gone by and you're just looking at, <laughs> at like trying to find yourself and trying to find who this individual is and looking at like the little eyelashes and the tiny little fingernails and, and, um, and and in that kind of and your brain is totally numb because <laughs> you're fucking tired. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I, I I think continue the conversations, but I, I definitely um, timing and patience, and it sucks that it's kind of on you to to um, push to, the ball forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to push the ball forward and to have and to and to and and to have like the control of like not. Um, of 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 you know the patient shit. I hate that shit. 
<laughs> but that's the best advice I have. Oh God, Jenny, thank you so Jenny, much. Will you keep us posted and and um, and best of luck and and also you you are you guys are all you, you're really young. I didn't have my baby till uh, I got pregnant at thirty five and had him at thirty six and now I'm forty. Oh God. Um, it's okay. Anyway, thanks. There's nothing wrong thanks, with that. Milo. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, but I have to tell you at the end of this sheet. Oh from yeah. Jenny, oh, that's right. So I never get these sheets, Jenny that um, Sim prints out um, but at the end uh-huh. it says P.S. when Milo Ventimiglia oh, when is Milo Ventimiglia coming on your show I'm dying for Milo and Ventimiglia <laughs> to meet their namesakes they did earlier um, and I can't wait for did you they? Yeah. <laughs> yes, one yes. half one but half I love it Jenny that, um, that you're a fan and thank you so so much and I wish that I could tell you like get knocked up and I do want you to get knocked up because um, it's fun. <laughs> well, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, okay, we love you. Thanks, very, Jenny. Very much. Thanks, Jenny. Sim, you kind of cut I her cut off. her off by she was a, she, Man, she had the most fuck. profound thing to say no, right there. I know, I know. I'm um, sorry, I, I'm sorry I Jenny. Wish, Jenny, actually, wish, yeah. Look, we had, I love that question, but what, but what yeah. do we do? I, you know what? You guys did great. This was a tough one. I threw a tough one at you guys, and you There's guys no it knocked easy. it out of the park. No, and it's also without knowing the husband or getting him on right. the phone, like, bro. It sounds like she does not want him to do this PhD for a while. It just sounds like when she doesn't know how also, to say it to him. It also sounds like, well, why? What is the rush? I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think when you know we as that age of being yeah. ten years past thirty, you think about that. You're like, mm-hmm. right. no, 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 you're good. Yeah, you have time, but when yeah. you are in that That's moment true. you don't you think, no 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 i have to do right. it now totally. why true. do you have to do it now yeah what's yeah. the hurry what's the rush just yeah. say it's it's fine yeah it's okay yeah you'll get there the party will start when you arrive i love it i love it we have one more call guys i we need to end on that will you, say you i'll it? say it again i'll totally okay, say it again okay, okay. we'll do that sound the party the will end no, when wait, no, i no. leave <laughs> 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 got it Chris just came home with some boxes. What is, what yeah, he, his yeah. arms were full. I know. I know. Do, do you like with like boxes of? I don't know treats. I don't were you, were know. you expecting like Amazon delivery or something? I, I don't know. It's I'd probably be, like okay. it's probably shit for him. You know, like free watches and shoes and shit. That's pretty. Cool. He, he gets some cool stuff. Huh? I know, but I don't. Where's you my? Get, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you you get a smiling husband. And I get Milo yeah. on my show. Here we go for part one of Milo and Tamilia visits. Yes. How many parts will there be? What's I'm your middle name? Undetermined. Anthony. 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 Yeah. Mav. Mav is my kind of love name it. sometimes. All right. So you guys ready Mav? for one Mav. more call? My life didn't even tell you Mav. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're just yeah. talking until. I know. Until, I know. You, until, you, until you hear the boop, boop, boop. There we go. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So we're going to call have Rachel. the voicemail what? box of Whoa. 4155. Uh, uh, San Fran- that, wait, that right was now. in San Francisco, yeah. right? 415? Uh, yeah, I think so. Get out of here. That's incredible. I got. I have, I have a very dear friend that works in radio um, named Dino. And Dino... <gasps> Dino... Come here. No, oh, oh, I hear that. We have a visitor. Look who it is. Hi, Jack. Come here. Hi, buddy. <laughs> come here. Can you come say hi? I saw Santa. What? Here, I saw Santa. Say it into the microphone. Hi. Say what's your what is your name? Yak. Yak. Your name is Yak. Yes. What happened today? I went and see Santa. You saw Santa. Yes. The, that hey, was Jack, so cool. Can you say hi to my friend Milo? Hi, Milo. Hi, Jack. How you doing, buddy? Good. Was it fun meeting Santa? Yeah. Did you tell him what you want for Christmas? Yes. What do you want? Helicopter that I can fly around my house. A helicopter you can fly around your house. That's incredible. Can you say hi to Sim and Amy and Cassie and Miriam? <laughs> say hi, Sim. Hi, Sim. Hi, Jack. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Don't take that off. I, I have a dying right, want, right. Anna, for your son to, to expletive Sim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> Says the man with no children. <laughs> Bye, Jack. I love you. Bye, buddy. Cassie, are we good? A helicopter that flies around, around the house. <laughs> um, oh, you on that? Adorable. Yeah. Oh, Chris is on that. I think that was in the, in the box. <laughs> oh, it's ringing now, guys. Okay. Four one five, San Francisco. We're calling Rachel. She's thirty nine. And she's. Hello. In, I think she's in Colorado. Rachel. Hi, Rachel. 
Hi. Hey, it's Sim. You're not in, are you in Colorado or San Francisco? I am in Colorado. I did live in San Francisco. Ah, uh, 415 area code. Are you, uh, oh, wait, okay, I have to tell you, um, our special guest today is Milo Ventimiglia. Hi. Amazing. What's up, that Rachel? Is, in Colorado, so formerly of the podcast. SF. Oh, awesome. we're, thank you so much for submitting a question. Um, okay, tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, Rachel, you're about. friends with a married couple who have put you in a tight spot. So ooh, tell us what's ooh, going on ooh. here. Whoa. Okay. So um, I have two friends that are married. Um, when I lived in San Francisco, I became really good friends with a musician husband. We worked at a video store together. It was almost 10 years ago. Um, I fell in love with his kids. I don't have kids, but I babysat for free, and I got to know the wife and just felt like part of their family. And um, then we both went our separate ways. I went back east. They went to New Jersey. I ended up in Colorado. Still stayed friends with them. Um, The wife doesn't really have a lot of close friends, so I think she would call me you know, in times of crisis. And um, the husband and I stayed in touch. We went to a few shows back east. And, you know, he's the one that kind of um, is in a band and, you know, has a really vibrant life. And she's like the stay-at-home mom who hasn't really, like, been able to, like, find herself. So that's kind of a little bit of background for them. Um, And the husband and I have stayed in touch. When I worked at a desk job, he and I would IM. I um, got sober three years ago and went into my... Oh, good for you. Um, thank you so much. And I wanted to let you know that it's so meaningful. You know, I got sober like the month before mom came on and me and all my litter mates like in, in AA <laughs> like really appreciated that show coming out. And, oh, good. Anyway. Well, good for you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So, Rachel, so tell us what happened. So, basically, uh, they had marital problems this year. I've stayed in touch with them but lost kind of touch with him. She will call me, actually call me. And so I just, I like, she was in such crisis, like, you know, wasted, like just, um, I, you know, I think something's going on. And then she um, has all the passwords to his phone and his computer and like basically looked at all his stuff and found out that he would, he cheated on her. And, um, and then, so she still wants to work things out with him. Um, on the phone with me a lot. I suggest therapy. She goes to therapy. She gets back on her like antidepressants and things seem to be going well. And then she plans a trip this year to see me last month. And we had a great time. Not so fun for me because she was still in crisis, still checking his stuff. Um, I was a little bit angry with him, you know, like, Oh, he cheated, you know, cause I've been cheated on and that's, you know, not great. Um, and then anyways, last week I was making a mixtape for a crush I have and he's a musician and loves the same kind of music. And I was like, Hey, do you have any good songs? And he was like, yeah, here's the list. And, um, and by the way, why are we not friends? I and, mean, you know, I've tried to, I am you a bunch. And, and I was like, well, I don't have a desk job or I am on anything anymore. Um, I'm doing what I love now. And so she's not sure if, if she should uh, tell the guy. Wait, okay. So he has no idea that she knows. Right. So she's feeling right. conflicted right. because she's not sure if she should tell this guy, her friend, that his wife can see all of these messages because his Correct. wife confided in her and now she is conflicted. Like, should I tell this guy? But at the same time, she, the wife is potentially seeing a conversation you're having with the husband. Right, exactly. He's asking about, exactly. Yes. He's asking about music, yeah. but he's also asking, why are we not friends? Right. So, so there's, like, there's a little yeah. bit of... Whoa. Can, can I right. suggest and, and I was compelled to call him and be like, just call me. But I'm like such a big mouth. Like I am like the biggest in the big mouth ever. And I would feel like I would totally tell him. And I feel like I don't want to get involved in their marriage. So I've been a little bit like just like duck- ducking them. Because the next day she texted me and was like, hey, I have all this, this you know. First off, she's, you know, she's, she's, to do something for her. she's got to stop looking at the messages. I, I think here's what I think. I, but but I think, OK, Rachel, this is drastic. Yeah, I think that uh, you have to tell them, and I wouldn't do it over the phone. I would do it like private Facebook message or however you guys normally mm-hmm. communicate. I would, but I wouldn't do it over the phone. But I would say, listen, uh, you guys, I, I love you both so much. Um, I have to take some time for myself right now because, uh, you know, as you know, I'm sober and I, I want, I, I need, um, 
I, I sort of need to like focus on on what I'm doing, and um, I love you both, and I'll and I, I just I just need a little breather from uh, from from your relationship, and um, and and I'll contact you guys in a few months, um, because because truly, Rachel, this is a lose 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 lose. Mm-hmm. There is nothing. <laughs> you can do that is going to make the situation better. And I would, I would put it on like the idea of, of like focusing on, um, on, on, on you and, and what you're doing because there is absolutely nothing you can mm-hmm. do to save the relationship. There's, if mm-hmm. you tell him that she's been looking, that's going to cause a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's this is their this is their problem, and they've involved you. This is their field to plow, and you and you have to extric- extricate yourself from from this as soon as possible. As soon as possible. That that's what <laughs> I think. And I know you may miss them, and they're going to miss you, and and they're they're very dependent, weirdly dependent on you right now, and. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, th- that would be my advice. Do, they, do these folks live in San Francisco and you're in Colorado? They actually, I met them in San Francisco. They they live in New Jersey now. Oh, they, they, oh, they, so oh, okay. they're they're even further. They're, yeah, it's they're, not like something. Yeah, you're you're communicating. I'm sure text, emails, yeah. things like that, and maybe yeah, phone calls, FaceTime. Right. Right. But you're not actually in the vicinity of them daily yeah. all the time. I, so I mean, I, I plan on visiting them. I mean, they're that. Don't visit them. And I love not yet. I love I love the. Soon. Finality that Sim is giving, and, and the kind of soft, soft kind of suggestion that Anna is giving. No, because because you you want to send your love, but I think that it, it's time for. I, I think you can. I think really think you can say, listen, I, I, I'm I'm going through some stuff. I don't, you know, but like, like taking on your your kind of uh, uh, hard would, times is is a bit much on me as a well, person. You know what? I wouldn't even go that far. I would just say. I'm really working on my sobriety. I love you guys so much. Mm. I need to take some time for myself. <laughs> and I love I know, you. But they know me so well that they're like, we know you're so happy. Hold on a second. Like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, and hold like they, on a minute. They're like, they would be like, that's a bullshit. Like, Rachel, whatever. Rachel, you, Rachel. I you're happy. <laughs> Rachel, do you enjoy being in the middle of any of this? Like, do you no, actually appreciate no, 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 having... It's no. a really good question, Milo. No, but it's a question of, like, you know, sometimes people yeah, that, you know, they enjoy drama. the drama, yeah. Sure. But sure. I mean, is there no, something, I, I, is there I something, that especially, I mean, that's something I work on completely. I know I'm like, a, I mean, I feel, I feel like you could people pleaser. So I feel like you could, you could, you could advise on. your girlfriend. Hey, look, the more you choose to not handle this with your husband, just the, the mm-hmm. more miserable you're going to be over the course of time. And things may burn white hot if she addresses it right away. It may be like a tough day, mm-hmm. a tough week, a tough month, a tough year. But you know what? Once they get past that, if she decides to address the problem and then move past it mm-hmm. for a resolution or um, you know, an understanding with her husband, well, then she's going to get back to yeah. a better, happier life. And if that better, happier life possibly is not being with this husband, well, then that's what is going to happen for her relationship on the other end for him. If he's saying, why are we not friends? You know, you, you may just say like, listen, man, I like on saying I'm busy in my life. I'm focusing on my life. How about you focus on your life a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Or you, and you don't have to <laughs> say that, but, but, but maybe say like, uh, I, I you know, I, I know, um, your you wife guys, has confided to me guys, and said that things are having problems. Like you guys, okay? Like you guys should like she loves you. Why don't you guys get together and yeah, talk? Yeah, and and I I would just extricate yourself. Like I yeah, said, oh, listen to me. I know some yeah. vocabulary. Yeah, words. I mean that was the it's feeling I had. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, 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 and just say for like a month, you know, because right now they're both very dependent on you, mm-hmm. and and you're you're. It, I'm telling you, it is a lose lose lose. Like yeah, like if you tell him that this other shit's going on and you tell her that this other yeah. shit's going on you, yeah you don't need you, you, don't, not, you don't need a paper trail that you, you don't need a paper trail going to win <laughs> yeah um true and uh and, yeah. and if you care about these people if you yeah. truly care about these they folks need to, they you, need to do it themselves set them set them straight Be like yeah. hey guys you both and and maybe you know Anna's right it's like if you had them both on like a quick face on I love you guys I care about you as a couple I care about you individually you guys have some things you need to work mm-hmm. out I can't be involved in that yeah if yeah. you gal uh, you know if the wife is going to therapy and the husband's going to therapy maybe they go to therapy together if yeah. the husband's not going to therapy or he's not willing to go to therapy well yeah. she got to address that it's 
Guess yeah. what, Rachel? It's totally. her marriage. It's yeah. not yours. Yeah. You didn't marry the and guy. You're not in Utah. It's not polyamorous or anything like that. And it's just say, you know, maybe I'll check. You. I'm, I, I love you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you on January fifteenth, and I love you, and um, and I really, I really hope that you guys like figure all this out because I, I just truly care about you. But, it, but I'm not equipped to, uh, to, to, to handle. How that. often do you talk to either of them? Um. Well, she. After her visit, which was a little rough on me, um, you know, it's like maybe a couple times a month and then more she calls me when she's in crisis, like something might happen. And he, like, obviously I haven't talked to him in like a year or so, like pretty much throughout my sobriety. I mean, we're, we're social media friends. They know what's happening with me and I know what's happening with them and their kids. But, but I mean, and you're I definitely can, avo- I can avoid them. I can definitely avoid them. But you're carrying but, the secret you know, when you talk to her about his cheating. And right, you, and like you know, you're carrying that with you, and that yeah, that's I, I just think that taking a break from all of that—that's yeah. a burden that you don't need. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I, and and that's the thing; it's not even about being avoiding someone so much as addressing for yourself to this couple that you care about them. Say, guys, I'm taking a break yeah. from you because yeah. a, I can, and b, I need to for yeah. your for yeah. your own yeah. personal. Health and, and well-being. I can't wait to go to the Florida Keys <laughs> in three years. Rachel, are you good with that? <laughs> Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and but I'm I sorry you though. So much. And you know, the election was such a like a, such a bad year. It was such a bad year for election. But I think the worst, the crime of the century was that Milo did not get sexiest man alive this year. He is dude. But the, but man, Dwayne the Rock. Ro- listen, let me tell you something, Rachel. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. How the fuck do you compete I know, with him? It's that dude is everywhere. funny. And I, um, he's he's intelligent. He's good looking. He's strong. No, but you're a side talker. You're a side talker, and that is the hottest thing ever. By the way, I can't even control it. I can't control. It. I was bo- I was born with a crooked mouth. I know. I was born with a crooked mouth. It's There's nothing I could do about it. And, yeah. Oh my god. Didn't Sly Stallone Sly Stallone hired you? Part of the reason he hired you off is because, of my mouth. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because well, we we he and I did this movie Rocky Balboa, and and uh, I went in for my meeting with Sly and. And I'm telling a story, and and uh, he says to me, I'm talking about some reshoots on a movie I have to do, and I have to have a beard. And he goes, well, I hope it's not biblical. And I go, no, no, it's not. And we start laughing, and then he looks at me and he goes, wow, his lip. It even hang- hooks down like mine does. And he turns to the casting director and gives this nod and a smile. Oh, like, my God, that must have been so good. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. Well, thank you. Thanks, guys. Rachel. Yeah, happy holidays and happy thanks so much for helping holiday. me out. I appreciate it. Oh, well. Yeah, and I'm sorry that you may have to take a break from your friends, but I bet I bet it's for the best and also I bet yeah. I bet you're gonna return the you they'll Totally. Yeah, in the in a good way. Yeah. Whatever happens. Well I'm gonna go get a massage and oh, you guys good. Saturday night. <laughs> Damn, I love you. I know, right? Sounds good. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Wait, I mean, like at the very end, of the, I'm gonna go get a massage. I'm like, oh man, now, <laughs> now, now, I have no sympathy for you because you're gonna be relaxed as fuck in about yeah. ten minutes. Uh, but that's hard to be put in the middle of uh, friendship a, mm. of a relationship like yeah. that and knowing secrets. Have you ever and, been in a position like that? Um, I'm not asking like in the middle for, of yeah, something. in the middle of something where you know you should not be in that in that situation. Mm. I think you have. Oh, many times. <laughs> the best thing to do is to completely remove yourself. Yeah. Just say, I'm not a part of this. Yeah. Sorry. Love yeah, you this both. Is, this is about Done. you. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but it's, but it's awfully hard to keep, uh, the secret of infidelity. Um, mm-hmm. and cause you know what? All this shit comes out. It mm-hmm. all eventually comes out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. it takes years, but it fucking comes out. And then. And then, and then you sort of have to live with those consequences. At the same time, being the messenger uh, is is incredibly difficult, especially you if you don't too. have yeah. accurate information, right. or you know, it's 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 unbelievably hard. Um, I like to tell my friends, please don't tell me any secrets. Because <laughs> I because I, I have a podcast. Yeah, and I don't have that many friends, anyways, <laughs> except for. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You don't need many. I like, don't. Truly, truly. That is what it's I've okay. learned. Yeah. I'm 40 and I've learned that I don't need that many friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But I love all, I love all my podcast listeners, and thank you so much for a wonderful um, evening or morning or wherever the hell you guys. Let's are. Let's also thank um, Entertainment Weekly. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, Entertainment Weekly. You too, Milo. So yeah. Entertainment Weekly is the the new best of issue is in is in newsstands right now. That's a new double issue, and we are so thankful and lucky. We were um, they gave us number one podcast, which is awesome. Of the year, so so awesome. So thank you, Henry Goldblatt and Christina Everett and everyone else at Entertainment Weekly. It's amazing. It's an amazing amazing honor and milo congratulations on your incredible show this thank you is us. yeah and you thank and that you. made the list as well for yeah. top shows on yeah, Entertainment Weekly. In, you yes. both are on the cover of entertainment weekly at the same time right now Sweet. Right we now. just high five i'm sort of like weirdly weirdly <laughs> down your corner you have to look hard i'm like waldo but the best part the best part about it is you're kind of like hollering out <laughs> you know you're 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 kind of like calling off and Se- i'm on the sexy o- as always and i'm on the other side of I'm the magazine you yeah milo Milo, uh, I got some uh, kids named you. Um, Where the fuck did that come from? What naming naming Garen Sarducci's kids? Milo and Ventimiglia. Paul Shear. It was Paul Shear. He like he came up with it. Yeah, that. he came up with it wow. during the improv on the spot, and oh he had no God. idea that we knew we knew each other. No, com- this is complete completely coincidental. Uh, the, yeah, I like to take credit for a lot of things, but that one I cannot take credit <laughs> wow. for. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Milo, that's incredible. My, we yeah. we travel all over the world and. <laughs> We do, and they have their finger on the pulse of Hollywood. Jeez, man. So Karen listens to everything that's amazing. That they say. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. So thank you. Milo, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. And congratulations again. Thank man. you, guys. It's no, you guys are amazing. Volume one. Yes. Complete. What was it? Uh, when, um, when I when I when I when I, when I leave the, the when I leave the party ends. Oh uh, no! I thought when you started the party. Sleep, when, all your friends leave. No. When you get when listen, you, the party will the start when you catered. get there. Oh. It's catered by Bruce's, <laughs> by Bruce's, right? Bruce's, if you don't know anything, Bruce's is like every Hollywood production is catered by Bruce's. And you're like, dude, Bruce is a busy yeah. dude. We but are, Bruce, but his food's Tim, amazing. when we make yeah. money, can we do Bruce? We can definitely do Bruce's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now it. we have to charge our celebrity guests. This will cost donuts. you donuts. This will yeah, cost you donuts, donuts, man. Don't don't fucking show up without donuts. But wait, really? What was it? Uh, um, the wait, party. Look, listen. The party will start when you get there. So listen, when you leave, yeah. party's gonna stop. That's what it was, right? Well, that I mean, that's the opposite. That, that, that feels was like that the, the narcissist ender? motto. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> the two of you guys are talking about narcissism. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, okay. I brought donuts to this party. Okay, so yeah, so no, wait, so no one's having fun, but me until they take off their clothes. Right or no? Yeah. Wait, no. Where did that come from? I'm just trying to remember the motto. So wait, the part when you open the door, the party says surprise, and you then get scared you and tell cry, them that you like leave. your grandmother died. Yeah, and they all feel really bad. Awesome. Okay, so live with that. Right. That's my life's oh my life God. advice. I know. Seriously, seriously, just yeah. Oh, the party starts when you get there. And then it ends when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> for you? Yeah, for you. Yeah, because, you know, we all gotta like do our own. Yeah. I'm just gonna stop. Follow us on Unqualified and all social media. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.